Yep. I got my hair cut. Wow, you did? Yeah. Did they offer to wash your hair? <laughs> no. Girl offered to wash mine last time. I asked her if she had flea and tick shampoo, and she didn't see any sense in that. <laughs> I mean, you know, if you got to do it, do it for good reason, right? Might as well. Well, look, we're on time today, Mike. Actually on time. First time in three years. Wow. <laughs> we're starting on time. Here we go. Mm -hmm. And, of course, we mess up the first take. Here we go. <clears throat> and now for something special. The unit is self-contained with its own saddler, farrier, wheelwright, and so on. It's a rigorous training dished on who know all there is to know about horses, and it brings results. We take you behind the scenes now to show just some of the interesting aspects of this training. Welcome back to Equine Dynamics with Mike Sign, the number one award-winning podcast to create sounder horses from the ground up. Mike Sign is a registered journeyman fair with an APF1 accreditation. On this week's episode, talking terminology, we're going to talk about what is a venogram, also a case study of a horse named Bella, and some new updates on my horse named Diego. All this and much, much more will be discussed here on Equine Dynamics with Mike Sign. And over to my far hand side is Mike Stein. How are you? I'm doing good, Travis. How are you? I'm doing well. You look good over there. As you're dying, <laughs> at, the, dying yes. at the same time. Uh, so what have you been up to? What's the latest on the, the caravan that you had running up to the, well, there's still, there's the still, hurricane uh, stuff? There's still people heading up. Uh, Kyle hauled in a couple of big truck loads. Who's Kyle? Oh, you can just throw out Kyle, these names. Kyle, like, it's South Park. <laughs> okay. Right? Yeah, but you throw out these names like the whole entire audience knows who your neighbors are. Uh, Kyle's Christy Forsman's husband. They hauled in. Oh, okay, okay. So, so there you go. There's a connection right. to the show. Okay, so right. there you go. Hauled in two uh, pretty good-sized loads of hay and then uh, you know, up, up to a collection center and then – went somewhere else and picked up another load of hay and he got in it hauled into tennessee the first two loads he hauled up to the Asheville area went and picked up another one and then hauled into tennessee and got to uh Roan mountain which they were trapped on Roan mountain because i know there was a family in camden that was up or from that as area that was trapped on Roan mountain because everything got you know flooded and washed out apparently Mudslide dammed up the creek and flooded everything, and then they, when it busted, it wiped out everything down downstream. Ah, man! The, I think it was the wrong creek. Saw so something on that this morning. But they were they were able to get in and out of the that area with hay outside of right. They got as far as they could with it, and uh, you know this they're going to need help up there for a long time. You know, there's going to be animals, people, everything else. So they don't, you know, don't know how long it's going to take to get these people now in the process back of, on their feet. Now in the process of them coming back and forth, back and forth, what are the, what are they telling you that they're seeing? What are they, are they seeing, uh, are they seeing the federal government up there helping at all? Or are they seeing FEMA? Are they seeing, um, you know, what is it, was the yeah. atmosphere like out there? You know, the people that, that I'm in contact with that are hauled up there have done it with, uh, assorted, groups like church you know like you know nick he went up and picked up the trailer nick your garage mechanic guy nick, nick my mechanic guy went, went and picked up that car hauler they'd emptied it out but he'd taken it to a church group and uh i know that you remember trish trisha dingle trisha dingle she's trish been, has been, yeah, she's trish, been on the show. trish jumps on the, these things and she's been working on organizing and collecting stuff that i've seen some of that have not spoke to her but uh you know there's going to be people that are going to need stuff for a long time and uh, their life will never be the same. And you can always reach out if you don't know who to, to who to contact or anything like that. Uh, one of our proud sponsors here at Equine Dynamics is the South Carolina Horse Council. You can reach out to Julie over there, uh, and that's schorsecouncil.com. I believe it's .com. Uh, I might get that wrong, but I'll, I'll fix it later. South on Carolina show. Horse Council. Yep, South Carolina Horse Council is who you're looking for, and they help no matter if you're in South Carolina or if you're in California. They'll help you out, and they have any questions. And if they, they don't have the answers to those questions, they know the exact people right. to get in contact with. That you know, if you're going to donate money, if you're going to donate your time, you're doing it with the right people. Right, and you know, you know, there's there. I've got friends that have been right in the path 
of what got smacked down in Florida, and that's another place where people are going to be in are in real need of help. Especially, you know, the hurricane coming across Tampa, you got that whole Ocala, that whole entire Ocala National Forest over there, and there's there's communities over there, there's horse communities, big huge horse communities over there, uh, and I haven't heard anything as far as the the results of that hurricane coming through there as far as the horse community down there down there yeah i will probably hear some tomorrow night because one of our board members is based in that area where they got belted around pretty hard All and right. you know when you go into these areas i've when i was doing power line work i went into these things so you don't you you, you be careful going in, into any of these damaged areas because it is it, it gets real dangerous sometimes so something funny that happened to me the other day when we had the helene go through and then uh, we had Milton that cut across Florida, and, but we did get some wind here. Now, we, bro- bit, yeah. we, we broadcast just outside of Charlotte, North Carolina, a little small little town called Marshville, North Carolina. And up the road from us, Mike, and I know you've driven by it like 500 times, is a literal horse birthing farm. Is that what it, you would call right. it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or the, yeah. Standard breads, mostly, I think. Yeah, they're all standard breads. I don't know what that means, but okay. <laughs> what right. Are, but they have all the little babies out there. My wife will always drive by, and she always looks at, because they have them all in pastures, and they're all up there by the road. She's like, oh, look at the wee little baby. She gets excited. It's like looking at the when at the hospital. When you're looking at the window of all the babies that were born that day in the hospital, you drive by this horse place, and there's all these little baby horses, you know, kicking and bucking and stuff like that. The funniest thing happened. I was driving by. Now, their property butts up right against a, a huge thicket of tree lines. Or, uh, yeah, a tree line, you know, area. It's a wooded area. Right. I mean, they've got a pasture fence and stuff around it. One of the trees, the top, one of the top branches fell off. And that branch that fell was bigger than my thigh. Right. I mean, huge. And it's probably 15 to 20 feet long. Mm. It was funny because my wife says how inquisitive horses are. And as I drive by, all these horses are doing this. If you're watching this on the YouTube video, and don't forget for every podcast we do, we have a matching video over on YouTube at Equine Dynamics, Mike Sign. All the horses are doing this. They're all sniffing. All of every single one of them, because it was a new item in their play field, in their area. Yeah, it was something different. It yeah. was something different in every single one it out. <laughs> every single one of them. There must have been 15 of them sitting around or standing around this thing and going, well, what is it? I don't know. What do you think it is? I don't know. Get, get uh, Dennis over here to punch it. And Dennis would poke his nose on it and, no, it's not one of us. <laughs> you know, that type deal. But, and then they start doing the, the lip thing where they take their lips and they just kind of like, bite it and see if they get a response. Yeah, yeah, bite it and nip at it and stuff. But it was so funny. It was I drove by and all of them were just standing around this brand new item looking at it like, hmm, this is new. All together, collectively, we're going to figure this out. Well, that's like the biting thing. I've oh, every every vehicle I've had, I've worked at, I've somewhere a horse has nipped it, <laughs> just to make sure that it wasn't. Just a, yeah, it's got to you know. It wasn't a threatening thing for them. All right, guys, stick around. We got a lot to talk about, lots to get into, and we're going to talk about my horse Diego. I know a lot of people are, are tired of listening about my horse Diego. I'm just tired of listening to you and and listening to me as well. But my horse Diego, be, only because this is a constant case study that we've been working on with Diego. Every true. horse to work on is a constant case study. This is true, but this is one hits a little home, close to home. So we're going to dive into his story because I got it a lot. Hit, it hits you in the pocketbook. I was just going to say I got a lot of money riding on this horse. So stick around. We'll dive into that story. And you think you're going to make money on this, right? I'm, yeah. I'm hoping somewhere I'll see uh, a light Let, of the. Let's let's. I got swampland. <laughs> I mean, I mean uh, beachfront property in Arizona. I want to sell you too. There's a song there somewhere. I'm yeah, sure. Something like that. All right, stick around. We got a lot to get into. Lots to talk about. So stick around. You're listening to Equine Dynamics with Mike Sign. He'll be right back. Welcome back to Equine Dynamics with Mike Sign. If you'd like to be part of the show, you can. Right now, you can. With the modern technology that we have today available to us, you go over to equinedynamics.com. At the very top of the page, it says join the podcast. At the top of the page where it says join the podcast, you'll see a little green. I'm sorry, it's orange. I get, I'm get i colorblind sometimes. You'll see this orange stripe up top that says leave a message for Equine Dynamics. Is now what? Green? It's no, it's orange. <laughs> Your logo's glick, green. Oh, okay, I knew something was green. So at the top, uh, where where is it? Oh, here it is. Hold on. Take my train of thought here. So at the top of the page, it says leave a message for Equine Dynamics mic sign. And uh, what you do is if you have a device that, with a microphone on it, your little smart device, your uh, handheld. <coughs> if your laptop has a microphone connected to it, you click on it. 
record a message, listen back to it, and then send it right to us. If you have if you have a question for Mike Sign, you can do that as well. If you'd like to say uh, anything about the show, if you'd like to ask Mike a question or ask me a question, you get those messages in there. And the great part about it is it, we play it on the podcast. We play it right here next to us. So you can be in the studio with us as well. If you have a smart device, let me get a hold of it. When I'm done, it won't be a smart device anymore, right? <laughs> Mike, <laughs> Mike is very technically challenged for the most part. But he'll, I, I will get the message and I will put it on the podcast. So you can be alongside of us here in the podcast studio. Just go to equinedynamics.com at the top of the page says join the podcast. Now, this segment we call talking terminology. And the reason why we call that for any of you are our new listeners out there. If you're in the barn, if you're in the vet's office, if you're anywhere around people where they're talking horse talk and they mention some kind of word or phrase and you're not familiar with it, we kind of define the technical terms that you might have heard uh, and not known exactly what they're talking about. Now, this week, we're going to talk about vinograms. So vinograms, Mike, tell us what vinograms are and why we're discussing it this week. What are week. vinograms? Uh, vinograms sounds like a... a uh, rock band. <laughs> a rock band or a vinegar graham cracker or something. Well, you can have a vinegar graham cracker if you like. Um, oh, and you need the light. Sorry. Right. Slacking on my job Te here. Technical director. All right, and we, turn and, on light, and we're going to switch the camera six here, so we can see this. Oops, we're switching the camera right. nine here, so we can now see. Th it. This is straight out of a lecture that I went to this past summer. Uh, tried to do a few things every year mm -hmm. for the Ned, and uh, these are some pictures of a couple of vinograms. So, you know, this is of a low PA horse. They inject a dye. Okay. And you have put a tourniquet on the leg. You inject a dye. Mike, I don't. Mike, your hands look like you have dye on them, too. Well. <laughs> Stick them right in the camera so I can see them. There you go. Upside down. There you go. What have you been playing with? Uh, it looks like vinegram dye. It is vinegram dye. Actually, it's uh, it's uh, putting rubber in some feet. Okay. And, of course, it started oozing around. And I was trying to got, dam it up with my hands and didn't have rubber gloves on. All right. Because I, I keep my hands perfectly manicured, you know that. You should be a hand model. That's what I thought. <laughs> so, vinograms, and you're, they inject the dye. Now, is it kind of like when I, I had an MRI for my back, is it kind of like the dye in that as well, where they inject it in, and, and within, I think, uh, 24 hours, you kind of it out? Well, they do use the contrast that's injected, and you can see the, the, the thing with a vinogram is if you've got you know, especially with use on laminitic feet or really damaged feet, you know, we want to take x-rays to see what's going on with the, with the laminitic foot. And, you know, okay, now we've got rotation, now we've got rotation, now we've got rotation. The venogram will start, do you want to, do you want to uh, find out after the fact or before the fact? I'd like to find out during the fact. During the fact. <laughs> no, before the fact, of before course. Before the fact of destruction. Correct. Uh, before Correct. you get rotation, it will show in the venogram. On an X-ray, it shows after you've after you've got the rotation. At that point, you have ripping and tearing and damaged and damaged foot. So, with the venogram, you start seeing if it's done properly. Techniques, everything. So, if someone says I'm going to take a venogram, and someone says I'm going to take an X-ray, those are two totally different entities. They are very different entities, and uh, like you can you. Know, see at different points and stages what kind of what kind of circulation you got this is a a foot that's in a ultima boot and uh you can or you can see the difference between this foot and this foot and where you do not have circulation and you know where the circulation is in relation to the coffin bone so i see a bunch of like lines as far as are those veins or those, those are those are your veins that's, okay that's the contrast and if you see down the front of this foot there's an area where there's nothing in there, where you've got a little bit in here, you know, it comes over the waterfall down the front of the foot. You see where it comes through the lamina, and uh, you know, in this area, if you know, if you're looking at tissue death and abscessing in this dark area, you're also looking at damage at this point where the coffin bone is pushed down below into the sole corium, and uh, you know, you you know here. If you, if you wait and see, you're going to find out later on after, and then you know you can you can do things to prepare 
prepare in advance or wait till there's damage done. Now you said that you know when we do when we have horses, it's good to take ex- just normal just ex- normal X-rays. At, yes, at least twice a year or once a year. Depends on what's going on with your horse. L- I mean, let's doc- let's just say a lawn feeder out there. A lawn feeder, uh, Doctor Mansman, when I worked for him mm-hmm. up in uh, Central Carolina Equine, his protocol was. For the health of a horse, take lateral x-rays once a year. Okay, once a year. And you need, this way, you're catching things before they become a problem. And that is, let's take care of it before it's a problem. And that's why with uh, the venograms, that's particularly geared towards laminitic horses. There are other uses for it. So how often is a vinegram only as needed, or is it a, a like a like a physical? Would you add a vinegram? I would not plan on shooting vinograms unless it is needed. Okay. And you don't ever have your situa- horse in a situation where... <coughs> <coughs> Dying over here. Where it is needed. <laughs> but, I mean, but you said when you do the vinogram, it's a precursor or precautionary measure before you start getting into the damaged stuff so right. i would think that you would want to do that alongside of like if you're doing your x-rays go ahead and throw the vinegram on top that way you have a snapshot of both the circulatory system of the horse's foot plus the bone structure of the horse's foot all on let's say january right. 1st right you know you could yes now the other end of it is if they are not done properly and techniques not followed properly you you can get some bad readings on vinograms. Now, there's some people whole vinograms aren't worth anything, but those are the people who don't shoot them right. <laughs> if you don't do it right, yeah, that's like having a scope and a rifle, and you don't you don't pull the cap off the end of it. Scopes aren't any good because you can't see anything through them, right? It's hunting season. Yeah, yeah, um, it is hunting season. It is hunting season. I know. Yeah. I've been firing them back there. Yeah. So let's you know find out what's coming at you before it happens instead of ending up behind the eight ball. And, uh, you know, if your horse got in the bucket of corn and got close to the deer feeder, got toward close, you know, or whatever, yeah, decided they wanted to go find your, find your neighbor's deer feeder and your horse comes up sore footed, maybe you are not showing any damage much on an x ray. But if you shoot a venogram, you can see where you're going to have damage. And, uh, you know, the thing of it is, is we used to always say, well, pain is, pain is the guide, right? Well, you got a horse with extreme shutdown of circulation. It's just like if you sit on your foot and it goes to sleep, I can beat it on a little hammer. So they can walk around okay, and they can be in big trouble. And, and not know it. And not know it. it that, that would be neuropathy, right? Right. And you know, they start going into neuropathy and all that, and it's like, oh, a few months later, everything falls apart, and it's like, oh, my God, they were doing good. On the other end, some of the horses that are extremely painful that we have put down because of pain levels were had good circulation, and they could feel the pain. So it, 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 it rules out a lot of things, and it brings out what's really going on internally if it's done well. Problem is, I don't have too many people out there that can do one well. So the definition that I have here written down by my hand, handy-dandy uh, cheat sheet here, uh, that a vinogram is the test in which the special dye is injected and enables the veterinarian and farrier to see the vascular patterns of a hoof. So that's what a vinogram is. Yes, it is. Yeah. Are you going to read more? Or are you going to? I'm good. Oh, okay. <clears throat> I, don't, I, I just draw pictures. It, so, so would you, I mean, what is the, what's the average price for a vinogram as to a regular x-ray? I mean, is it like, you know, $20 and don't quote me on these prices, believe me. I'm just giving like, just throwing $3.57 extra. <laughs> is it really? No, that's I don't, the, I don't have a clue. I've, I've, I've worked on cases case where I don't have a clue. I've, I've, I've worked on cases where vinograms have been used and helped us out quite a bit. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I have no idea. That's that's up to the vet clinic. So you would think, and you say, you always say this all the time, when you get x-rays getting done, I'm going to switch back to us right here. So anytime you get x-rays getting done or venograms getting done, you always say in the uh, at the end of your statement, as long as they're done right. As long as they're done right. You kept saying that no matter what, it's, if it's a venogram or whether it's x-ray. And, you're, you're, and you say it's always up to the horse clinic or the clinical office. So why aren't they doing it? Right. You would think that, you know, when I go to the doctor, now granted, you can you can open up that can of worms in itself, but when they go in there to do surgery, eh, you know, sometimes they get it right, sometimes they don't. You know, it's that well, type deal. But you, you're on the street, you're in the barns, and you're like, oh, well, I really, I can trust it only if they're done right. Why aren't we spending a whole lot of our time well, focusing on making sure that, because that's the, that's the start of everything. That's where the, that's where you get all your information. 
Why aren't we starting there to make sure that it's done right so well, Mike Stein can come I in have, and read those right? I have been in situations, and, and it's <laughs> like up, uh, up at NC State now. they got Ryle Bross is doing a lot of work with him up there now on the on the podiatry end. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Ryle has done a lot of podiatry work, and, you know, he's he's very good in that area. The problem is, is for years – the foot i mean i've had people well vets well we did a we did a day on foot care we went went and worked in the cow barn for, for an afternoon and that was it and that was it that was accredited that was it yes and they look a lot and i've i've sat there in barns with somebody with an x-ray unit and they have shot x-rays and you look at it, it's like ooh, whatever and i've had x-rays come to me look like rorschach's ink blot test you can't make out anything but you know the digital the digital units have changed things because you can see some something right there and it's like you see the foot well that's a that's a rabbit and and this or whatever and that's your x ray right so <clears throat> right. what do you do with that and I've been in a sit you know, sat there in the barns with an x ray being shot somebody pulls it up on the screen and it's like well that looks like said position it doesn't look like a ladder we're shooting for and. You know, you got people in the barn, and it's like, hey, can you check how your x-ray is set up, how your positioning? Oh, I'm in the right place. Boom. It's still not lined up right. The, it was shot over you know, multiple times in the same direction. I don't understand why it doesn't look like a lateral. Are you shooting? A, you know, And it's like, let's move here. Let's move here. Let's drop, you know. Hit the microphone. <laughs> hit the microphone. Let's get our plate direct behind the foot. And it's just like being able to measure, make measurements on an x-ray. Uh you know, it's like if, if there's not paste on the front, a little bit of the front of that foot burns out, so your, your measurements couldn't re- be real accurate. And it, have you used a calibration tool in there so you don't know what kind of magnification you're looking at? If you have a calibration tool, you got something to work against so you can give accurate measurements. It sounds like a lot of p- amateurs out there taking the way and, you just uh, the way you describe it. It sounds like there's a lot of amateurs I've, out I'm, there. I've gotten recent X-rays here recently where. I know that they own the calibration tool, tool that goes with the unit, and you look at the x-rays and so, well, what are the accurate measurements? I don't know. No calibration tool put in there. The units will set up to deal with it. I'd, I'd be so pissed. I'm sorry. I'd but be, I'd be so pissed. The sad thing is that's more normal than not. I know, and that's the sad part. You know, here you got this, you know, $5 million horse, and you got this guy who's barely making ends meet. You know, I got an x-ray right. machine. Click, click, click. Well, you know, I, I used to take pictures of high school kids, and you know, for the yearbook. I can right. take pictures of, you know, horses' feet. It's like a, a you, you shooting, you and me shooting stuff with our cell phone, or me anyway. Right, exactly. And, and then an actual photographer, what kind of, what they can do with the pictures. Same with an x-ray. And, uh, you know, on the old film plates, you always wanted the foot against the plate. You did. We didn't use magnification tools because it was shooting on the film. Mm-hmm. But you knew on the size of the foot, you were between eight, 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 or say eight and twelve degrees magnification, depending on the size of the foot. And as long as it was against the plate, you could be relatively accurate within a range on that. We can make a whole show. If of they're this, not against the plate, well, that's different. But if you use the magnif- the 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 calibration tool that sets you up where you'll be okay i know we kind of spun off topic there but i mean but it's just to show how important having a good vinogram shot and how a good x-ray shot it's like these numbers are it's like we don't know what they are yeah exactly all right so when we come back we're going to dive into a case study of a horse named bella and we have some videos of her and we're going to show them make sure you go over to youtube and join us as well so stick around you're listening to equine dynamics with mike stein right right back I should have said on the intro talking about the storm. What about what? Well, uh, apparently Mary Stacy was contacted, or nurses were contacted, that can't can you ride because they're talking about putting together sort of very secluded areas that they can get nurses into people with some medical supplies on horseback up there in the storm areas. Did you want to talk about that real quick? As yeah, I think so. Okay. I think so. I think that would be a good, you know what I mean? Mm. <laughs> That's fine like that. Okay. I just need a little bit of light on your face. An interrogation light. Yeah. There you go. Oops. Try not to get the mic shadow on your face. There mm. you go. <laughs> okay. It's Mickey. <laughs> you ready? Yes. 
Welcome back to Equine Dynamics with Mike Stein. Make sure you follow him over on Facebook. And the way you do that is search Equine Dynamics Mike Stein. And he's got his personal page up there, which I think is maxed out with 5,000 some odd people. I think it maxes out at 5,000. So he's had to create a business page. So if you're looking for the difference between the business page and the personal page, the personal page has Mike Stein's ugly mug. No, I'm kidding. That's Mike, not getting any prettier. <laughs> Mike Stein's pretty little face. And then the other one has the Equine Dynamics I'm podcast. I'm here to make you look good. <laughs> the other one has the Equine Equine Dynamics podcast logo. And the, my very own uh, runway model over on my far right side is Mike Stein. How are you? I'm doing good. I got the wave down. Yeah, you look good over there. Uh, so you were saying something that you uh, forgot to mention at the opening of the show as far as the hurricane and, and people that are ri able to ride horseback through the, right, the Tennessee, right. North Carolina, Tennessee area to get supplies. Tell me what you were uh, Well, uh, you know, they're, they're packing in with mules and everything else in some of those real secluded areas, and they're getting into people through the roads, and you know, the power guys are in there, and I know, I know how it is because I live that one. Um, but, no, uh, Nick's wife is a nurse. Nick, your auto mechanic. Nick, my auto mechanic. Mm -hmm. Nick knows how to fix my trucks and keep them on the road. And his wife, who is a nurse for 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 equines or just a nurse in general. And she is a nurse for humans. Okay. I, I'm not 100 percent who she's tied in with working. Okay, with okay. So I, I thought she was like an equine doctor or something like that. No, no, no. Uh, she is a human nurse. Okay. And they've put out to nurses that you know they're asking for nurses who can ride okay and uh they were asking for horses and all that but her horses you know most of them are older and retired and they couldn't handle that rough country at this point in the stage in their lives and so essentially you're looking for nurses that have somewhat of a riding ability that can volunteer right. and, and ride horseback through the right. wilderness and she, through, through. And, and she told them she you know if they had a mule or anything up there she didn't care what it was she can ride mm -hmm. but they need somebody with the the nursing experience who can get into people who have i mean there's people that, that, that are getting in trouble because they're diabetic among other things see that's one thing you don't think about i mean you think about like helicopters dropping goods you think about people taking four wheelers in there you don't think about people i if I'm a doctor, I'm a doctor, but I can't get in there unless I'm on a horseback. But well, I don't know how to ride a horse. But right. there are some people out there that are in the the in the medical field in the medical that can ride. That can ride. And they're yeah. grouping together to get into some of these people that are very. There are still people that you cannot get into with a motorized vehicle up through those mountains. So if you're interested in doing that, reach out to Mike Stein over at equinedynamics.com, and he will get you all the information and, and the right contacts. So and I don't stuff. I don't know who all is organizing it, but by God, we can get you aimed in that direction. Yeah, we'll get you start, set up and started over there now getting set up and started we have a case study of a horse named bella now why are we talking about bella and what's her dealio belly bella is a saint she makes ugly faces at you <laughs> but but she is a saint okay and we have a video that we're going to watch here of bella and do you want to watch the video first you're going to set us up well no no let's up bella was bought because i have someone who is a matured rider okay. who had gotten back into the horses after they were matured but it's been horses younger but they had hit the ground and had sustained some injuries and uh had uh had to wear one of those turtle shell deals for a while the the horse rider the rider the, the rider fell okay the rider came off and looking for a horse that she could get back riding on and uh keep her safe and sound and happy and they came up with Miss Bella. Okay, am I hitting play? You can hit play. This, right. this is Bella. Now, don't forget for every podcast we do, we have a matching video over on YouTube, and you can and see you, the you, you can look, see. Hold on, you can see the whole entire podcast, unedited and everything like that, and you can see all this stuff that's going on here behind the scenes. And this is Bella. Bella is Bella. Okay, and what are we? What are we going to say? Talk, and you're talking over top of me. Sorry. Go ahead. Okay, this is Bella, and you know you look at her standing there. She's out behind herself goose rumped shoulders are braced up high-headed and all this and but but if she can take care of this lady and keep this lady happy we're very happy to have miss bella and um this horse we talked about her the other week she actually ended up and that's that kind of a grainy grainy picture because the idiot with the phone this video you know, video you know his finger while he's doing it <laughs> so because I am talented in those areas, but we're you know, taking a look at look at 
look at her and she's wondering why this weirdo's sneaking around behind her. You know, she's mm-hmm. paying attention to things. Yeah, I can see your ears are being pinned left and right and left and right trying to figure out who you are behind her. Right. So this is a kind of a rough, fuzzy look at Miss Bella. And, uh, you know, she's... She looks good. Yeah, she does. But her pelvis is out behind her. She's pretty straight leg and she's leaning on her shoulders in the front end. But if she can... And there's, there's the gravel through... Uh, <laughs> I don't know what's going on with my camera, but that's the, the gravel. Or I can't tell what that is. That's the gravel. That's the gravel. But you were taking a look at Bella, and we're trying to get Miss Bella in a, in a in a little bit ha, ha, little bit happier way. And she actually here recently she did her little dressage test with a rider, and who had never shown dressage, but not not the owner, a lady who. A gal who keeps Bella exercised and did pretty darn well at a first level dressage test. I'm like, you went and did the first level with her. I said, yeah, she does the work, but she looks very different now than she does then. And, you know, we had to do some things mechanically because, well, help get her first thing, get her moving forward. I can see, yeah, I can see she's got, she's leaning real hard on the front of her. She's very hard on the front end, but the first thing is get her moving forward. You know, and do what we can to help her move forward. And also, the problem a problem we ran into was moving straight. So, have to work with moving straight. And we got a picture of her back at this point. All right. So this is the back okay. of her. This is a picture of Bella from behind. Right. This is a picture of Bella from behind. And if you look, you know, if you look her down her spine and follow it down, it's a, it's a little twisted down through there, right? Yeah, it's got a little it's a little squirrely right here in the right, center. Right. It is. And if you look at the shape of her left to right on the center, of the, the side of her barrel swung to the shape of her shoulders and all that, she's uh, she's a little sideways and she's hollowed out in behind the withers, backs dropped. So that that plays directly into what I'm doing when I'm working on feet, and when I go to the forge, because I, I mean, you, you know, you've seen me shoe is I trim or I'm pulling out everything out of the truck, right? Correct. But everything everything I do is pretty pretty heavy, pretty modified for that particular horse and there's there's our hindquarters so we had to get her work on moving forward and then moving straight and uh also we ran into it to a deal last little while where we had, we had a lateral movement on that right front when she landed heavy on the outside and then popped in so i had to adjust for that because when it when that leg snapped in i think it was bothering her knee so actually, we ended up putting ran, running a shim on that medial side for a while, and as we got her moving straighter and stronger, we've actually had to wean that down and wean it out because you when you're when you're working with movement patterns, what you do to get the movement pattern going can become an interference, and you almost want it to. Then you start weeding it back. That's why every time you do a horse, it is always a constant readjustment, readjustment, readjustment. I, people say you shoot the horse. How do you know how to do it the same next time? Well, I don't. And uh, I don't, I don't take notes on them. But it's up to what that horse is showing me the next time they bring them into me. But you're always readjust, readjust, readjust. So you want to see the the progression, right? Like I, I, you don't have like five shoes already set up. All right, this is what we're doing week one. Like putting on braces on someone's teeth. Right. I don't. I don't pre make anything. Yeah. So you I do it. I do it on site. And you and you look and see. Okay. What I did last week, this is what I need to trim and I'm tweak now. I'm looking at now. shoe, shoe wear. Mm-hmm. I'm looking at the body shape. I'm looking at, I'm listening to the horse walk in in this situation on the concrete. All right. Now, look at this picture here. This one looks so much better. I can tell that uh, that, she, that whole back line is a lot straighter. It's a lot straighter than this right and here. And that back is not near a sec. Now, it's not the same angle. So, you, you got to consider that when you're looking at it. No, but I can tell. But look at, look at behind the weathers and look at how the shoulders have filled out and look at how even they are at this point now what is the the time difference between this picture here and this picture here mm, six to eight about six to eight months okay so this has been a while this is not overnight this is not, not after overnight. one this is not, not a six overnight. week training or tr- uh, trimming this is six to eight months right and uh you know wh- how and where are you you know, play a support you can you know, like jack miller said we can provide support there's a point when support becomes you know, too much leverage or not you know, and we can we can and we can eliminate pressure uh eliminate pressures break over okay eliminate pressure in a direction if you got 
a lateral movement. We need to we need to support the lateral movement, or we need to eliminate pressure. And in that in that landing outside and popping back in, we needed to support that landing for a while. And then the landing became a bit of a hindrance. So then we've had to wean that back. So last time, I actually did some adjustment on the one foot before we actually went back to how we were going to shoe her just on the one foot where we had that land outside me to land. And part of that was the horse was not track wanting to track in a straight line and she'd gotten straighter. So then what I was doing to help support that, to keep that knee where it was not popping in and bothering the knee on the old mare became a hindrance. So playing with how much to back off of it before I actually did the horse. So the, I'm just going to yeah, which was in in the barn hallway. We moved her down the barn hallway. I made adjustment, took her back down the barn hallway, and sometimes you can just take take a piece of chewing gum and stick it somewhere and see how the horse <laughs> reacts. Basically, because that's kind of kind of what we were doing: slide something and stand on it. You can take a you can take a pad, put the foot, load it, put foot, load it, and I don't really do that with pads so much anymore. But if you do that, you can take a like a a small wedge pad, put it in any direction under the foot and see how the leg wants to line up. And that's kind of a tr- thing to start training your eye to see what's going on. So how's Bella now? Uh, Bella is, she's been to her dressage show. I think I'm trying to remember it was I, in my mind. They're all, the, all my horses always win first place, but I think she did a third place at first level with a rider who'd never, never ridden dressage before, which I'm like, she did what? Well, she said, well, the, the rider's been right or never, never showed dressage before. She's ridden dressage. She's ridden plenty of dressage, but never been to a horse show. And she's been working Bella for the owner and, uh, among everything else that, that, that we're doing. And, you know, Brett's, Brett's working his his deal on it so the question i have and it's a small little question would a dressage you might not know the answer to this would a dressage judge penalize the rider because of the way bella was looking like if she saw like the the drop shoulder well, bella, we get some more pictures uh the bella doesn't have a drop shoulder anymore well i know not anymore but i guess i guess what i'm saying is I guess that would affect the the movement as well. But Bella did well in the the competition, which I'm sure made the the rider more confident in right. riding Bella, and uh, made the owner very happy, and made the owner very happy as well. I'm sure. All right, guys, stick around when we come back. Speaking of being uh, trying owner, to make owners happy, <laughs> yeah. Speaking of trying to make owners happy, we're gonna dive into what's been going on with Diego and his. If this owner's happy. I can leave you with it and his growing pains as well. So stick around. You're listening to Equine Dynamics with right. Mike Stein. He'll be right back. Welcome back to Equine Dynamics with Mike Stein. If you'd like to join the podcast, it's easy now with modern technology that we have here in the studio. Go over to equinedynamics.com at the very top of the page says join the podcast. You'll see a little uh, orange bar at the top. It is orange and it says uh, leave a message for Equine Dynamics, Mike Stein. Click on your device or click on it. And if your device has a microphone on it, you speak right into it. Uh, you can leave your name in there. You can be anonymous if you want. Put an email address in there. It's not email grab or anything. It, it's just their way of saying that you're not a robot. And you, your voice can be heard right along the, in the podcast with us as well. And we'll reach out to you and get you some free swag and some stickers and stuff. If we use yours on the air, which we will. We will because everyone's important and everyone has important questions. And my very own important question is over to my far hand side. a question. That is Mike Stein. How are you? I'm doing good, Travis. How are you? Uh, well, I don't know. It all depends on how this segment goes. This this segment... We're if I drive out of your driveway and never come back, <laughs> you'll know how it goes. This, this segment we're going to talk about is my horse, Diego. Now, a short little background on Diego. We have a gelding that is off campus that my wife is riding now in competitions. Uh, she's doing very well in the competitions. She's got a state championship coming up here shortly, I think in the next couple of weeks or so. Uh, when we bought the horse, uh, Mike said that the horse was a little down in the back. What was it? Or uphill? Well, he, he's he's definitely uphill. He's like almost strangely uphill. And over the last month, if not a month, a year, months or year, one year, uh, you have been s- slowly working on that. And my wife and her trainer have been trying to build muscle. And she did very well in the competition. This past competition, she took all the all the bronze, all the gold, all the all the silver, all the way home. Right. And uh, 
So now she's having difficulties because he's going through another growth spurt. Right. And the stifles are sore. And he just keeps getting bigger. And he's, yeah, so he's, it's like a, a workout, a football player, you know, he's going through training camp and now getting into the prime season and working out harder to stay up with the big dogs. So right. tell, tell me what's going on with Diego right okay. now. A quick rundown on Diego. Diego is, they want an uphill horse, he's uphill. Uh, when you first, first saw Diego, first start putting him to work, he, he was small in the hindquarters and pretty straight in the back end, and his pastern set lower than I wanted him to. So when we were talking about what to do with him, and they're putting him to work, picking up the pace, that to me is something mm, not where I want him to be. Is if if left if left there when what are we doing on the suspensories? First question. So we talked. The goal is to keep him with without shoes as long as possible. But if we keep pushing that, keep pushing it, and keep pushing it, what are we going to do? So I work did some work on the back end. We stood the pastures back up, started flexing. He's starting to vi- develop some hind quarters as he grows. He's a uh, you know, and, and Diego's six up, years old now. Six years old. And uh, we left it. We opted to leave him barefoot on the front. And because the mechanical problem I was addressing was the hind end. So that's what we worked on. Now, the other thing with Diego, he's a high low. And uh, the problem with the high low thing is the development in the shoulder and the range of movement in the shoulder. That low side is going to have a, have a longer stride. The high side is going to have a shorter stride and be a weaker shoulder. As they're developing him and getting him mover, moving, they've done a pretty good job of keeping him pretty straight. And that's the big thing is when they start getting out of being straight. So like most any horse with a high-low, the side, the back foot, most of the time on, on the behind the upright foot. The upright foot, diagonal foot is more upright. And then you have the low front, low diagonal in the back. And the foot directly behind the upright shoulder ends up taking taking a lot of pressure. So in the growth patterns, he's he's you know he's coming up more on the on the left hind, right shoulder. I'm I'm thinking about to your horse. <laughs> I can't tell left from right anyway. You know that it's not in front of. I mean, I turn turn around. This is different anyway. Correct. It switches so anyway, around. Anyway, he's compressing down on that foot where he's trying to swing himself around the low shoulder and as they get him bigger and bigger and bigger there starts all of a sudden they're starting to be a bigger stride difference between between left front and right front so when he does that his, back, his whole body twist to, to compensate to going as straight as he can which is not exactly straight so in that we have opted to do some work on his front end and I, what i did was actually really basic but we had more more control over what what was going on with the breakover through the shoeing period than with him being barefoot because he grows a lot of foot. And uh, so in that, but a pretty basic, I do kind of a, a boxy job, hammer rolled, hammer rolled breakover, you know, heat it up. I take, take, take a hammer to it. I, I build breakover into the shoe and uh, then go on with it. And also looking at, at, you know, how I'm shooing from left to right. It looks pretty, pretty, same from left to right as far as shoot nothing nothing real crazy i do some crazy the stuff i did on Bar- on bella looks a little odd but it's enough to get him tracking in a straight line and let's get him in a straight line he's not torquing on torquing on that stifle joint as much now she was real worried about we got a competition coming up but we don't exactly we, we don't want to change anything <laughs> and it's like you know if you don't change anything you're not going to do well in the competition and it's what degree do you address it with so that's kind of where we are at this point. And we can move forward from there. We'll see what he does next month, right? I'm hoping if she doesn't bring home the gold, Mike. <laughs> well, I'll go down to the trophy store. I'll get you a gold medal. <laughs> Participation trophy. All right, All right. Guys, all right, guys. One more little segment. I, I don't know. I have to... Uh, run not through i have to run all that back through my wife and see what she says as far as uh we'll see what the truth of the matter is yeah, right exactly brett so, seemed to think the horse is doing better well good that's, that's that's all i care about is is that someone says that the horse is doing better and if you're saying that the horse is doing better i'm gonna go with that as well right. all right we have one more little segment we'll wrap up the show so stick around you're listening to equine dynamics with mike stein he'll be right back yep <clears throat> you ready yes yes i am <laughs> Uh, okay. 
Welcome back to Equine Dynamics with Mike Stein. Make sure you follow him over on Facebook, and the way you do that is search Equine Dynamics on Facebook, Equine Dynamics Mike Stein. And Mike always posts a different uh, bunch of different articles. Well, he puts pictures up there as far as all the horse studies and stuff that we've been talking about here on the program. So check that out. It's a great follow if you want to further your education uh, with equine horses or just get knowledge and, and general information <clears throat> of the equine world. Also, you can follow us on YouTube. That's search Equine Dynamics on YouTube. And uh, make sure you give them a subscribe over there. And, and anytime a new video comes up, uh, you can see that in real time as we're talking about anything here on the podcast, any of the videos that we were sharing here, like Bella. Anytime we have x-rays or anything that we're talking about case studies or any kind of movement of a horse, we'll show that on the YouTube channel as well. And we also have little shorts over there, the little bite-sized pieces if you don't have time to sit there and watch the whole entire show, you can kind of skip through and watch the little chosen segments that we have there. They're about one minute long. I think they're extending it out to about three minutes now. So uh, we'll have those for you as well. Make sure you give them a subscribe. And, and don't forget to join the podcast over at equinedynamics.com. And over to my far inside is Mike Sign. How are you? I am doing good, Travis. How are you doing? Well, I don't know yet after that you, last conversation. You will, you so. will be told. <laughs> I will be told whether it's a good thing or a bad thing. Right. So what did we learn today, Mike? Don't stick your finger in a light socket. No. What did we learn today, what Mike? What did we learn today? Uh, we learned the importance of Enneagrams and what a Enneagram is. Hold on, Mike. We have, right. to, it's a, we have to set this up. Set this up. Yeah, all right. So what did we learn today, Mike? What did we learn? We were talking about Enneagrams and what Enneagrams are and the importance of them. Yes, we did. And uh, the value of having them done well. And hopefully in this more people will start thinking in that direction and that's an argument that we can go back and forth as far as you know why why are people taking vinegram pictures if they're not any good at taking vinegram pictures they need to take vinegram pictures and they need to practice because it's just like working in the forge because i don't do work in the forge because because how many how many hours do you put in right exactly it's a uh, practice to perfect take, the craft yep and also a uh, picture of let's see let's respect this picture of bella and this, right. is, this is Bella, and this is a horse that you were working on, the case study of a horse named Bella. Right, not hollowed out behind the withers anymore. Her back's pretty straight. She's going forward. She's she's, she's getting it done. And this was a horse that uh, a person who was a little shell-shocked, I guess? A little shell-shocked bought to have someone who would be very secure for her to get her back riding. And she's doing well, and she, did a, she went into a competition as well and did pretty good in the dressage competition mm -hmm. with She's this horse. she a dirty spot. <laughs> and also, uh, the update on Diego. The update on Diego. We got Diego going in a straight line. He's getting ready to go to his... Did, did they go yet, or is it getting ready to go? They're getting ready to go here in the next couple weeks. Okay. Go to his finals and, and win it all. Oh Well, that, well hopefully. We'll, we'll I'll go to the local uh, trophy shop. I'll get you a gold medal. And okay? I think I think it's around the Halloween, the last week of October, the first week of November that she's going up there. Well, ha Halloween, I'll get you some candy gold medals. All right, guys. If you'd like to be part of the show, well, the way you do that is go to equinedynamics.com. At the top of the page, says join the podcast. We'd love to hear from him. Now, if you don't want to go in the air, that's fine. You can also leave him our type in an actual physical message for Mike Stein over at the contact section over on equinedynamics.com. On behalf of Mike Stein over there, have a good day with your ponies. My name's Travis saying see you next week. Thank you.